The 1979 Wichita Falls tornado began at 5.50 p.m. Central Standard Time on the southwest flank of its parent supercell thunderstorm, about three miles east-northeast of Holiday. Witnesses say that several small vortices were visible during the formative stages of the tornado as it moved along the Fort Worth-Denver rail- Railroad into Wichita County. Two oil storage tanks were blown away and several homes were unroofed near Farm Road 2650 as the tornado approached Wichita Falls. Six cross-country steel transmission towers were destroyed just east of Farm Road 2650. About the time the tornado entered town, it changed appearance, becoming one large black cloud of condensation and debris. The tornado was about a half mile wide when it struck Memorial Stadium, snapping light standards and causing heavy damage to the field house. McNeil Junior High was next in the path of the tornado, and the school was severely damaged. The western portion of the school building was crushed by the intense winds. The tornado then moved east-northeast into the Western Hills neighborhood south of Southwest Parkway. Several apartment complexes and many homes were destroyed with several of the first deaths occurring in this area. The tornado expanding in size as it moved across Southwest Parkway throwing automobiles about and leveling several businesses, including a bank and a fire station. The twister was almost a mile wide when it entered the Faith Village neighborhood on the north side of the east-west oriented southwest parkway. Most homes in Faith Village were demolished. Ben Milam Elementary School was heavily damaged as the cafeteria auditorium was completely destroyed and exterior classrooms were pummeled by debris. The inner hallways would have been the only relatively safe shelter in the building. Surprisingly, very few few fatalities occurred in Faith Village. Most people heeded the warnings and took shelter inside interior small rooms in their homes. Most of the destroyed homes had some of the interior walls standing after the tornado. After moving out of Faith Village, the tornado destroyed several businesses, including a restaurant on Kent Boulevard. Three people were killed in the restaurant. A number of people were also killed in the parking lot of Sykes Center Mall, also on Kent Boulevard. Some of these people attempted to run to their cars from the mall. Inside the mall, portions of the J.C. Penney store collapsed, while other stores received light to moderate damage. No one was killed, and only several major injuries occurred among the approximately 1,000 shoppers who were in the mall. The mall was on the north side of the tornado path and appeared to escape the most violent winds. Near the center of the tornado, about a half mile south of the mall, a church was demolished with one person killed inside the building. The tornado then crossed a short span of open fields before moving into the Colonial Park area. More widespread home damage occurred in Colonial Park and several more apartment complexes were demolished. The heaviest damage in the apartments occurred on the second floor of two-story buildings. The tornado then swept through the Southmore area, destroying homes and a shopping center. After crossing U.S. Highway 281, the twister then struck the Sun Valley neighborhood, destroying additional homes, apartments, and businesses on the south side of U.S. Highway 287. A large number of cars were smashed, and some people were killed along U.S. Highway 287, some of these people had stopped their cars under an overpass seeking shelter from the storm. The tornado leveled a mobile home park on the north side of U.S. Highway 287, but residents had evacuated that area and no fatalities occurred in the park. The tornado then destroyed several industrial plants before moving into Clay County just south of Texas State Highway 79. The tornado was one and a half miles wide as it moved through eight miles of residential area in Wichita Falls. The intense damage averaged between one quarter and one half mile in width. 42 people were killed outright and three died as a result of heart attacks. Further statistics reveal that 25 of the deaths were auto related. 16 of these 25 were people who entered their cars trying to evade the tornado. 11 of the 16 left homes that were not even damaged. Eight people were killed outside, four people killed in homes and apartments, and four others were killed in public buildings. 1,700 injuries were reported in Wichita Falls. Total damage in Wichita Falls was estimated at $400 million. 3,095 homes were destroyed and 600 were damaged. 1,062 apartments and condominiums were demolished and 130 were damaged. In addition, 93 mobile homes were devastated. It is estimated that 5,000 families, consisting of almost 20,000 people, were left homeless in Wichita Falls. Dissipation of the tornado occurred northwest of Anuka, Oklahoma, bringing the path length to 36 miles in Texas and 11 miles in Oklahoma. 
Thanks, everyone, for watching. The, the Waco tornado on May 11, 1953, tops the list as the deadliest tornado in Texas since 1900. The violent and deadly twister ripped through the downtown area, killing and injuring hundreds. By 9.30 a.m., a muggy spring morning was already taking place across much of central and eastern Texas. Temperatures were in the mid-70s from Dallas to Waco to Austin, with lower 80s along the Gulf Coast. Breezy southeast winds were ushering rich Gulf moisture into the region, with dew point readings in the lower 70s across southern and central Texas. Texas. Early morning storms across the big country from Abilene to Junction produced outflow boundaries or pools of cooler air as they dissipated. It is thought that these, these boundaries played a role in tornadic development across Texas later in the day. During the afternoon hours, scattered storms developed along a dry line extending from the eastern Texas panhandle to Midland to west of Del Rio. One supercell produced a tornado at San Angelo approximately 2.30 p.m. after likely interacting with an outflow boundary from morning storms. The tornado was rated F4, killing 13 and injuring 153. The 20 mile path resulted in the damage or destruction of 519 homes, 19 businesses, and 150 cars. As the San Angelo storm dissipated, another storm developed in southwest McLennan County. Taking a closer look at the surface chart from 4.30 p.m., winds at Waco were from a more east southeasterly direction than winds at surrounding observation sites. The additional turning of the winds in a localized area was likely the result of a nearby outflow boundary and may have enhanced the tornado potential of the storm. The tornado touched down around 4 10 p.m. southwest of Waco near the town of Lorena in McLennan County. After destroying a home north of Lorena, the tornado moved north northeastward toward Waco. The tornado was approximately one-third of a mile wide and wreaked havoc through the downtown area. Eyewitness reports indicate very heavy rain falling at the time of the tornado, making it difficult for people in downtown Waco to see the twister coming and take appropriate action. Although radar data at the time was primitive compared to what is available today, the eyewitness accounts of heavy rainfall suggests the tornado was spawned by a high precipitation supercell. The twister continued plowing north northeast of Waco, likely likely dissipating to the community of Axel after a 23 mile long path of destruction. Hello everyone, thanks for clicking on my video. If you like weather history content, please like and subscribe. In today's video, I will be discussing the 1997 Gerald tornado, also known as the Dead Man Walking tornado. So let's dive right into it. The Gerald Tornado of 1997 was a devastating tornado that struck the town of Gerald, Texas, USA, on May 27, 1997. It was one of the most destructive tornadoes in U.S. history. Here are some details about the tornado. The tornado occurred on May 27, 1997, in the late afternoon. It struck around 3.45 p.m. local time. The tornado was rated as an F5 on a Pajita scale, which is the highest level of tornado intensity. It had estimated wind speeds of over 260 miles per hour. The tornado's path was approximately 7 miles long and around 1.3 miles wide. It carved a path of destruction through Gerald and the surrounding area. The town was particularly hard hit with numerous homes and structures completely leveled or heavily damaged. Tragically, the tornado resulted in significant loss of life. 27 people lost their lives due to the tornado and dozens were injured. The tornado's incredible power resulted in a near total destruction of some neighborhoods. Homes were swept away, leaving only debris behind. Vehicles were thrown great distances and mangled. Trees were debarked and the landscape was left barren. The tornado prompted a massive response from emergency services, search and rescue teams, and volunteers. The recovery efforts were challenging due to the intense, intense of the extent of the damage. The tight-knit community of Gerald received support from surrounding areas and beyond. The Gerald tornado is significant in meteorology and tornado research due to the extensive documentation and analysis conducted by researchers. The data collected from the tornado has contributed to a better understanding of tornado formation, behavior, and the impact of severe tornadoes on structures. The Ger Gerald tornado underscored the importance of tornado preparedness, early warning systems, and safe shelter. It also led to improvements in tornado forecasting and emergency response strategy. The 1997 Gerald Tornado serves as a somber reminder of the destructive power of tornadoes and the importance of being prepared and staying informed during severe weather events. Thanks everyone for watching. Hello everyone. Thanks for clicking on my video. If you like weather history content, please like and subscribe. In today's video, I will be discussing the May 11, 2011 Joplin Tornado. All right, well, let's go ahead and dive right into it. The Joplin tornado was a catastrophic tornado that struck Joplin, Missouri on May 22, 2011. 
It was one of the most devastating tornadoes in U.S. history. Here are some key details about the Joplin tornado. The tornado struck on May 22, 2011 at around 5.41 p.m. Central Standard Time. The tornado was rated an EF5 on the enhanced Vegeta scale, the highest rating for tornado intensity. It had estimated peak winds of over 200 miles per hour. The tornado's path was approximately 22.1 miles long. The tornado caused widespread and severe damage along its path, including the city of Joplin. Entire neighborhoods were leveled, and numerous buildings were destroyed or heavily damaged. The destruction was so extensive that it was compared to the aftermath of a bomb blast. The Joplin tornado tragically resulted in a loss of 161 lives and caused injuries to around 1,500 people. It was the deadliest tornado in U.S. modern history since record-keeping began in 1950. Emergency responders, including firefighters, police officers, and medical personnel, quickly arrived on the scene to assist survivors and conduct search and rescue operations. The aftermath of the tornado led to a massive recovery and rebuilding effort. The city of Joplin received assistance from various federal and state agencies, as well as volunteer organizations. The rebuilding process took years and the city underwent significant changes in terms of infrastructure and community development. The Joplin tornado highlighted the importance of preparedness, early warning system, and community resilience in the face of natural disaster. It also spurred discussions about improving tornado shelters and building codes in tornado-prone areas. The tornado was part of a larger outbreak of severe weather across the central United States. This outbreak resulted from the collision of warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico, with a strong cold front creating an environment conductive to the formation of powerful tornadoes. The Joplin tornado received extensive media coverage both nationally and internationally. Images and videos of the structure were widely shared, contributing to the public's understanding of the disaster scale. The Joplin tornado remains a significant event in the history of both Joplin and the United States, reminding us of the destructive power of tornadoes and the importance of disaster preparedness and response. Thanks everyone for watching.